Hey everyone. So look, before we get started, if you don't mind, please subscribe, like, comment on the video. I'm trying to grow the channel. I'm trying to see if there's much interest in making videos like this in the future. All right, so one thing that a lot of people run into when they're running a system like the Holly Terminator, which is what I'm running in the car, they might, maybe you're doing an LS swap and you have a Terminator set up, Terminator harness, but you still want to use the VR44G alternator that came with your, your engine, but it has that two pin alternator connector on it. And as you know, you have to have the factory GM ECU to control this unit, or do you? So, there's a solution to that. You don't have to go back in time to the four pin connector on the older alternators, which just has a feedback loop. You can run this alternator by using a relatively cheap device on eBay. <clears throat> it, this one is a pulse width modulator frequency meter. Okay, so it's all disconnected right now. It's disconnected so that I can kind of show you the path of wiring or show you how it's connected. All right, so we have the alternator here. We just have a single power wire power and everything this goes actually to my uh, starter okay so this is the two pin connector the wire on the top the red wire is the one that i'm using the white wire is routed inside the car as well but it's not hooked up to anything so you really only need this pigtail with this wire the one that's on the right or the top to go to the little pulse width modulation device now, inside of the car, we have the pulse width modulation device. Okay, all this doing is chopping up the signal. Okay, it's chopping up five volts and we're gonna control it. So I have everything kind of uninstalled here and this isn't where this is gonna live. I'm gonna give it a new home here soon. This is a simple device. All it does is regulate, it steps down. It's a DC to DC converter, okay? It steps down 12 volts to five volts. Simple as that. Red is 12 volt positive, ground, black. Black is ground on both. Yellow is five volt out, okay? Then, so we have five volts coming out here. On this unit, there's an instruction that comes with it, but it's not necessarily accurate. Okay, so the voltage negative, you don't hook up anything there. The voltage positive, that's your five volt positive. The little ground symbol, that's where your ground wire goes. And this wire right here, I'm actually using speaker wire. This goes to the red wire on the alternator. Simple as that, okay. All right, so this dude, we're just gonna set him right there for now. Turn the key on. ECU's coming on. Oh. That'll work. So right now we have float voltage on the battery. Okay. You set your pulse width modulator, you just hit frequency up and down. You set it to 128 hertz. Okay. Right now the pulse width modulation is set up at 81%. That means that the pulse width, if you had 100% pulse width modulation, there would really be no frequency. It would be high, it would be high volt, five volts all the time. If you had 99% pulse width modulation, basically the five volt signal would be high 99% of the time and it would only drop down for 1% of that cycle, that frequency. Whatever that, look at this dude getting all up in my face. All right, dude, hop down. Anyways, 
Uh, 50% duty cycle would be during that time frame that the oscillate, it's not an oscillation, during that time frame that the signal goes from high to low, which is not a sine wave, it's a square wave, and it's not going below the voltage reference point because it's not alternating currents DC. So you're going to five volt positive to ground, five volt positive to ground, to zero, five volts to zero, five volts to zero. Um, it would go high 50%, low 50%, high 50%, well this is high 81, low 19, high 81, low 19. Now we'll crank up the car.